Okay, next is our scenario number two with the inner working with VLAN mode. Now we need to modify the MPLS R2 VPN configuration that we just did in scenario number one to allow a dot one Q header to be transported. Okay, we can reference this scenario two diagram, then we have to verify connectivity and then take another look at the packet capture and know the difference. Okay, so going back here, we're not really going to change any kind of configuration on any of these routers or circuits. The only difference that we want to see that when the packet gets transported across the serial wire, we want to see the dot one Q header in there. Because as we saw in the scenario one, we did not see a dot one Q header. And what this means is we have to instead of using the mode Ethernet, we need to use the mode VLAN. Okay, so the first thing that might come to your mind is to jump over to the PE router and change the in the working mode to VLAN. So let's go ahead and try that. And first going to be on the router R1 under the pseudo wire class. I think we call it IW Ethernet. And if you do inner working, question mark, here we have an option for VLAN. So let's see what happens when you enter that. All right, and you do a show run interface fast 00. And here you can see that it's complaining in the configuration saying that our cross connect configuration is incomplete or invalid and that's as soon as we have changed our inner working mode to VLAN and let's go ahead and do the same thing on R2 and see what happens so we would assume that we would like to match the inner working on both sides so let's change that as well with inner working VLAN And you can see that as soon as we match that on both sides, LDP neighbor actually got reset, although the LDP neighbor came up. So you might think that the VC is up, but if you do show MPLS L2 VC, you can see that the status for that is actually down. Okay, if you're trying to do a show L2 VPN service cross connect all detail, we can see that we do not have a full up up although the inner working mode says vlan on this side and then we kind of copy that show command and show you that on the r1 side as well you can see all of them actually set up down for the ce router facing and then down down for the pseudo y facing side so for some reason by changing the inner working mode to vlan it takes down our vc and what i've actually have found is the way that I can get that to work is to actually remove the inner working altogether. So let's try that and see what happens. So Ethernet and then remove the inner working VLAN. So basically allow the router to do the auto negotiation or discovery on that and kind of figure out on its own that it actually has a disparate circuits on both sides. Okay, let's try the you know, inner working VLAN. So let's remove that out together. Give it a second. And now let's do up arrow and see if we can redo that command. Looks like it's still down at this point. Let's make sure we no longer... Oh, it looks like I forgot to exit right here. So as soon as you can see that I exit the pseudo class, uh, pseudo wire class configuration, the neighbor came up. So go back to R2, do up arrow. Looks like it's still saying the inner working ethernet. So let's do a show run pseudo wire class let's see what we've got here and on this side let's see obviously we no longer get that errors on the configuration you can see that this side has already gone into the indoor working vlan and looks like on r2 it's still stuck on the inner working ethernet so maybe if you try to put the inner working vlan back in it kind of forces it Let's see what happens. So as we type in the inner working VLAN uh, mode into the pseudo wire class configuration, it brought back up the VC as you can see. So somehow when you're dealing with the inner working mode VLAN, you don't need to have the same command enter on both sides. So we saw the R1 kind of auto detect and it kind of figured out that it needs to use the inner working VLAN where R2 is actually kind of odd that you have to force it, although it's running the ethernet VLAN mode locally. But nevertheless, the VC came up on both sides. So now let's do another ping test. So let me kind of restart the Wireshark here. And then from R6, just do up arrow. 
with the ping. So it goes through right away because it has to be talked to one another. And still have the ARP entry, so I didn't have to do the ARP. And here, if you look at the ICMP ping request from R6 to R7, we now notice that we have a .1Q header in there. But since the circuit type on R1 is just a regular Ethernet, it doesn't really have a VLAN assigned to that. So you can see the VLAN ID that shows up on the .1Q header is zero. But still have the .1Q header in there just because we're running a VLAN in the working. And now if you see, if you look at the ICMP reply from R7 back to R6, it also contained the VLAN tag in there with the VLAN ID of 67, which is what we have for the local circuit on R2. Okay, so that is the main difference between the VLAN in the working and Ethernet mode in the working. VLAN in the working allows the .1Q header to be transported on the pseudo wired, but they both can only handle Ethernet frame. And that should complete our task number two. Next is our last scenario, number three, in the working with IP mode. So here we have to configure R8 and R9 interfaces to have the following IP. On the R8 side, you can see that we are Instead of using Ethernet circuit, we are using a serial point-to-point -point circuit that we're going to be running a PPP encapsulation on with the IP of 89.8. But on the R9 side, it's just going to be a regular Ethernet okay, with the IP of 89.9. So we need to configure an L2 VPN between R1 and R2 with the VCID or through the YID of 300 and then provide connectivity between R8 and R9. Then we have to verify connectivity and again, take a look at the packet capture. So here's our scenario number three. We, we kind of now take us one step further and instead of having ethernet circuit, we've replaced that with a completely different type of circuit. In this case, it's a serial interface with PPP encapsulation. So obviously within the PPP encapsulation, it has no or contains no ethernet frame. And that's why we can no longer use whether it's ethernet in the working or VLAN in the working. The only thing that two types of circuit has in common is the IP header, and that's what we're going to preserve while the packet gets transported between, within the pseudo wire, and this is why we call it IP in the working. So you would use IP in the working when you run into the circuits on both sides that either one or both do not contain Ethernet frame. Okay, and you pretty much have to go to the last resort, and the only thing that you can pretty much carry it across is the IP packet. All right, so start our configuration off again from left to right. On router R8, we're going to be configuring our serial interface 10. So R8 interface serial 10. First, we encapsulation PPP. IP address 162.16.89.8 slash 24. No shut. Okay, now on R1, we're going to do a pseudo wired class. IW for inner working again, underscore this time IP, encapsulation MPLS, throw in control word, and for inner working, we're going to choose IP. And on the interface serial 2.0, we have to make sure we're matching the encapsulation type, which is PPP, and then perform our cross connect configuration 0 0.2, ID 300. And then pseudo y class is IW IP. Exit and no shut. Okay, and then I'm gonna restart a Wireshark. Okay, have it run in the background and then complete a configuration on R2. Pseudo y class IW IP encapsulation MPLS control in the working IP and on the R2 side is going to be fast Ethernet 1.1. 1, 1. Cross connect 0 0.1 ID 300 encapsulation. Now we don't need that. It's going to be PW class IWIP. Get exit, no shut. Okay, we see some mapping messages flew across. Again, since we already have the targeted LDP session negotiated, the R1 and R2 is good, just going to piggyback off the same session. And then the only thing that needs to exchange is the label information, which we just saw right here. And let's take a quick look into that. So this is from R2 to R1. Look at under the 
Label Distribution Protocol, Mapping Messages, FEC, Elements, Virtual Circuit ID is 300, with the Control Word Presence, and you can see right here because we are running in a working mode IP, the Virtual Circuit type has been changed to IP Layer 2 Transport, and the type number for that is 11, which is represented as B in hex. So you can see that is completely changed. And last is the label that's R1 received from R2, and that is 28. Okay, now on the reverse side from R1 to R2, we should be seeing pretty much the same thing. So again, matching VC type, IP layer 2 transport, and R1 is sending label 26 to R2. Okay, so that's what's happened underneath the label mapping message exchange when you turn on the inner working mode IP. Okay, so let's finish off our configuration on the router R9 on FAST10. So R9, Internet Interface FAST10, IP address 89.9, no shut. Okay, now going back to R1, let's do a quick show command, show MPLS, layer 2 transport, PC, 300, detail. Okay, and here we saw that the packet uh, label mapping from R2 contains the label 28, and we see the 28 right here. Path is active, so everything looks good. Then if we do, so you can do up arrow right there with that command. Here we have the circuit encapsulation PPP on the left, running in the working IP, and then the pseudo Y on the right, ID 300 with the labels. And they're all up, so we are good on that. Now let me restart Wireshark, and then we're gonna do our last ping test and see what the packet looks like. Okay, so here's the Wireshark. Now on R8, ping 162.16.89.9. So we're having a little problem. Let's try to ping from R9 then. 1689.8. You can see that it's pinging just fine. Let's try that again. Okay, you can see that now you can ping from R8 to R9. All right, let me kind of stop and see if we can find. It looks like somehow the capture doesn't really show the packet content when you run in their working. It seems like the Wireshark somehow still think that the header that comes after the control word is still ethernet frame but in fact that should be an ip header since we're doing the ip in the working now and that's why it kind of messed up the rest of the payload and you can't even display that properly okay so i think that's got to, uh, something to do with the the way that the washark decode the packet but you can still kind of tell that this packet right here is a ICMP request because we're seeing two MPLS labels in that. And then the next one's obviously has to be the ICMP reply with a single MPLS label. But either way, we have our successful ping from R8 to R9, and we can also ping from R9 to R8. And that should complete our task number three. So after going through this lab, hopefully you guys have a better understanding of when to use each type of inner working. And just to summarize, you use the Ethernet inner working, where there's Ethernet mode or VLAN mode when you deal with two circuits that contains Ethernet frame, whether it's just a regular Ethernet frame or it has a dot one Q tag on it or being encapsulated inside of the layer two WAN protocol, as long as the Ethernet frame exists in there in the inside the packets, then you can pretty much use the Ethernet inner working. And the benefit of that is any protocol that runs directly out on top of the Ethernet header, like CDP, can be pretty much transported across the virtual circuit as well. Now, IP in a working mode, on the other hand, although it's the most compatible with variety of circuits, since what it does is just basically stripped off completely the layer 2 frame header, regardless of the protocol, and then just leave behind the IP header, which pretty much exists on most of the IP packets. But the downside of that, obviously, the only protocol that supports is IP. So anything that runs directly on top of the layer two or ethernet header would not be able to be transported across the virtual circuit when you're running this particular in the working uh, mode IP.
And that's pretty much wraps up our video on MPLS, any transport over MPLS with inner working. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.